Welcome to another session of analytical techniques or spectroscopy. Today we are going to look into infrared spectroscopy or IR spectroscopy in short. Before we move on, subscribe for more informative videos. At the end of the session, you will be able to enumerate the different types of IR regions, explain the instrumentation in detail and working of infrared spectrophotometer and also list out the applications of IR spectroscopy. First, let us understand what is IR spectroscopy. Infrared spectroscopy is the interaction of infrared radiation with molecules to undergo vibrational excitation from lower to higher vibrational energy level. That is, the infrared radiation has low energy and is not capable of undergoing electronic transition, so it undergoes vibrational excitation. That is, each covalent bond present in the molecule, especially organic molecule, absorbs IR radiation of specific frequency or energy which corresponds to the energy required for the vibration of that bond. That is, the covalent bond which requires a particular vibra uh, energy for that vibration, that energy only is absorbed by that bond. An infrared region is divided into three portions and we call it as near infrared which corresponds to 14,000 to 4,000 centimeter inverse. This is mainly used for quantitative analysis and it is useful for food industries. Mid infrared region 4,000 to 400 centimeter inverse. This is mainly used for identification of functional groups, quantitative analysis and detecting impurities. This is what we commonly call it as IR spectroscopy that is mid infrared region. This is further subdivided into functional group region which corresponds to 1,400 to 4,000 centimeter inverse because in this region the functional groups can be detected. That is, each functional group will have a characteristic peak in this region. And next region, we call it as fingerprint region, that is 400 to 1400 centimeter inverse. Here, it's very important that we'll have a lot of peaks in this region, which will be very complex and it will even overlap. And this complex peaks, we cannot assign each and every absorption band for a particular stretching or bending vibration. But the pattern of the peaks will correspond to a particular compound and looking at that pattern we can compare with the known compounds IR spectra and we can confirm the unknown compound. So that is where this fingerprint region is useful especially it's useful for isomers for example cis-trans isomers, positional isomers both will have the same functional groups but the pattern in the fingerprint region will be unique for that particular isomer. This is where the fingerprint region is useful. Far infrared 400 to 10 centimeter inverse this is mainly used for analysis of structure of molecules. Now we look into the instrumentation part of double beam IR spectrophotometer. We should not get confused with the FTIR. This is a different dispersive instrument. And here IR source is there. Here we can use uh, uh, Nernst Gloyer or Nichrome Coil or uh, Globar Silicon Carbide. In all the cases when it is heated between 200 to 1200 degrees centigrade, IR radiation is produced. Here in this double beam design, we see that a double beam is generated and one beam passes through the sample and the other beam passes through the reference. But we can also use a beam splitter where it splits the single beam into two equal beams and one beam passes through the sample and the other passes through the reference. Now we assume that the reference does not absorb any IR radiation. In case it absorbs also, while comparison it will be landlified with the sample. So the sample will be absorbing the IR uh, light, that uh, IR radiation. That is we have already said each covalent bond within the molecule is capable of absorbing IR radiation at a particular frequency. So after absorbing that light, the remaining light is transmitted. So the light coming out of the sample and the reference enters the optical chopper. First, we should understand what is an optical chopper. It is a motor driven optical chopper. It is a uh, rotating disc. Now for your understanding, there are different types of optical choppers. For your understanding, I have taken one type of chopper. You can see that there are white and black portions in this chopper. That white portions are the open part where the light can easily enter into it. And the black portion, when the light passes through, hits that black portion, instead of getting transmitted, it gets reflected. So it is designed in such a manner that when it is rotating, when the light from the sample 
hits the white portion the light from the re reference will hit the black portion that is when the light of the sample is transmitted the light from the reference will not be transmitted in the other way it gets reflected so this way the optical chopper helps us to focus the light from the sample and reference alternately into the monochromator that is for each frequency the sample and reference beams will go separately alternately into the monochromator next we'll come to the monochromator monochromator is not simple prism as we have seen in other spectrophotometers here it's a complex uh, portion where it contains prism or grating and uh, you will have lot of slits present in it mirrors present in it filters all put together only we call it as a monochromator in case a prism is used we normally use nacl or kcl prisms what is the role of monochromator here is it disperses the polychromatic light that light that is the light coming out of the sample and the reference is polychromatic in nature so it disperses the polychromatic light into different component frequencies that is individual frequency components that is the job of the monochromator that light from the monochromator now enters the detector here what the detector does is it optically compares the light coming out of the sample and the reference in case the sample does not absorb uh, any light at a particular frequency then the reference also will not absorb sample also will not absorb and the detector will compare the light coming out of both sample and reference and because both does not absorb the it will form the baseline in case at a particular frequency the sample absorbs the light and reference automatically will not absorb sample absorbs the light that portion of the transmitted light the intensity of the transmitted light will be less and this detector compares the uh, li transmitted light intensity of the sample and the reference and at that particular frequency it will show a peak and this is recorded in the recorder okay the, you will get the ir sp uh, spectrum so this is done for each and every frequency of the ir region so the scanning taking place will be very very slow in this process now we'll see each and every component in detail we saw what is a source actually it's a electric heating of the source to temperatures at around 200 to 1200 degrees centigrade and due to this heating we get ir radiation it can be a nichrome heating coil wound around a ceramic support or nernst glowier a filament made of oxides of zirconium yttrium cerium or and thorium globa silicon carbide which is also called as carborundum and in the design if it is a double beam two equivalent beams of light is generated from the source one passes through the test sample and the other through the blank and reference or else we can you also use a beam splitter which splits the single beam of light into two equal portions and one passes through the sample and the other through the blank next is the monochromator as i said already the polychromatic light from the sample or the reference is dispersed by the monochromator and reaches the detector the transmitted light after being absorbed by the sample is dispersed into component frequencies that is the polychromatic light is dispersed into individual component frequency and if prism is used normally it is nacl or kcl otherwise we can use diffraction grating mostly diffraction grating is used if di diffraction grating with narrow slits is used we will have high resolution if it is a wide slit we will have high sensitivity because more light can pass through it next comes the optical chopper as i have already said reference and sample beams are alternately focused on the detector for optical comparison of the transmitted light coming out of the reference and the sample it reflects or transmits the sample beam alternately into the monochromator i already said if the sample beam is reflected it transmits the reference beam and the other way around so this is the optical chopper next is the detector we have two types of detectors selective detector similar to the one we have used in uv spectrophotometer and uh, colorimetric analysis it can be a photocell photoconductive cells or semiconductor devices this converts the radiation falling on the detector to the electric current that is depending on the intensity of the transmitted light that much amount of electric current is generated in these detectors now non selective detectors are commonly used compared to the selective detectors here it is also called as thermal detectors it converts the thermal radiant energy into temperature sensitive response that is 
the light coming out of the sample and the reference will have a different temperature based on the difference in temperature depending on the detector used a particular parameter will change for example if we use a thermocouple emf or voltage will change if we use a thermistor or a bol uh, bolometer it will change in resistance pyroelectric it changes in electric polarization in pneumatic cell it changes in pressure of the enclosed gas an amplifier it is optional in case the signal coming out of the detector itself is strong we don't require an amplifier if it is weak it require amplifier is required to enhance the signal lastly recorder each frequency that passes through the sample is measured individually by the detector and this process becomes very slow because it scans the complete entire uh, ir range we we'll look into a few applications of ir identification of unknown compound this is an e a one easiest way is if you will have a library which contains lot of ir spectra stored in it we can take the ir spectra of an unknown compound and compare with the known uh, ir spectra and looking uh, we can match it up and identify the unknown compound the other way is interpreting each and every absorption peak for a particular uh stretching or bending vibration of a particular bond present within a molecule and finally we identify the molecular structure looking at the absorption peaks this is a best method for the researchers because we don't know what the compound is and we can uh, predict what are the compounds present and functional groups as i've already said each functional group will have a characteristic peak and that can be detected we can also study the progress of a reaction because the reactant will have a different characteristic peak and the product will have a different characteristic peak at the beginning of the reaction we'll have only the reactant peak at the end of the reaction we'll have only the product peak and during the progress of the reaction we see that the intensity of the reactant peak keeps decreasing and the intensity of the product peak keeps increasing this is how we can study the progress of a reaction we can also determine the impurities present because the impurities will give us extra peaks it is also used in forensic departments biomedical applications food industries pollution control boards most of all it is very much used for researchers where we normally prepare lot of organic compounds this is all for today let us meet again in another session until then bye bye don't forget to subscribe for more informative videos thank you